Hey y'all, it's Bailey and welcome back to the channel for a video where I'm going to talk about some of the new products Makeup Forever has come out with, namely the Artist Rouge lipsticks. This is just the PR packaging that it came from, but six lipstick shades from a brand new Rouge Artist um, collection, as well as the Water Blend Foundation. If you follow me on Snapchat or Instagram, you might have known that these, these guys came a couple weeks back, but due to traveling and just stuff that's been going on, it's taken me forever to, and a few other things that I'll talk about, namely with this foundation. It's taken me a while to get around to talking about about them but here I am today gonna swatch all these shades for you tell you about the formula my thoughts on them as well as the same for the water blend foundation so let's start with this guy first and I'll do the lipsticks later I'll put a timestamp down below and you're interested in skipping forward you're like Neh, I have my thoughts on the water blend not interested go on with your bad self and I'll put the timestamp down below so this guy is the Water Blend Face and Body Foundation. You get 1.69 fluid ounces for $43, which is the exact same as all the other foundations Makeup Forever has. The Ultra HD, even the Ultra HD Stick, which you guys know, is my Holy Grail Stick Foundation. They're Ultra HD. Amazing. Highly recommended. Uh, so I had really high hopes for this guy. And by the way, my shade is Y245, but they it, it's a little too light for me, but of the other two shades they sent, it is the closest to what I should be. So I have quite a bit of bronzer on to kind of help balance that out. But ideally, and this is no fault of the foundation formula itself, it's just the shade I got. But um, one of the reasons that it kind of took me forever to get around to using it is just the fact that it's a little too light you know when you have something that doesn't quite match you you're you know less inclined to use it so finally got around to using it and when oh the other thing that kept me from using it is the first time I, the first pump I put on my skin water is not a lie when it comes to the texture of this foundation like so so thin and as a result it has very light coverage buildable coverage but not very buildable I mean you have to put quite a bit of this product on to get it to build and I definitely recommend that you let it tr dry in between those layers when you do to kind of maximize your coverage otherwise you're just building wet product that tends to get streaky so tip number one let this dry in between layers to build it right off the bat the texture it just was such a deterrent for me because I know I love full coverage and so it was too light the texture was off-putting I kind of stuck it to the back of my to try shelf and was like less inspired to try it as I was with other things that I was not only receiving in the mail but also pur purchasing. By the way, side note, you're going to see a lot of bare nails here, in, especially in the close-ups, and that is because I'm not wearing my falsies like I normally do. I actually ordered, I could watch Simply Nailogical's holographic nail powder video only so many times before I realized I just needed it, so it's supposed to get here tomorrow. I'm so excited, but as a result, I'm, I took my nails off today, but still get this video, so here I am, and that's that's why the bear nails. So bear with me. Jokes are way less funny when there aren't people here to laugh at them with you, at you, for you, whatever. Long story short though, I was less than inspired to use this kind of at first swatch, so it took me a while to get around before I finally just said, let's sit down, let's really test this out, take some pictures before and after shots to really understand like a true feel of what it looks like on the skin, kind of give it some time, give myself a little bit of time to get used to it, and then actually look at the wear throughout the day. So. That's how I kind of came to love this guy. Yes, the coverage is light, but there's just something that happens in the drying process that really evens your skin out in a very natural way. Don't get me wrong, it is still very light coverage, but yet it is buildable. It takes a little bit of time to build because like I said, I recommend those layers to dry, but when you do, the layers are so thin that it really builds natural looking foundation on top of it. And essentially, this is kind of what I wish the Ultra HD was for me. Everyone raves about it, but for my combo skin, it just does this weird Thing where it like makes me look flat gets kind of greasy throughout the day I prefer the stick for that reason and so this to me is kind of what I wanted that to be where it just like becomes one with my skin while still evening my complexion out and then it lasted throughout the day that's the other thing I can't believe like there was no breakup with this it is literally like it became one with my skin and then lasted all stinking day and something to know about today or like the last couple of days here in Austin Texas it has been raining non-stop with like 150 percent humidity it it gave it it gave this foundation every opportunity to just break apart and look like a mess on my combination skin and it didn't so I was very impressed with that as well and I didn't set my face with powder just my under eye area because I'm also testing the Kat Von D new locket concealer with that powder that I'll have a, a video coming up on soon but basically I, I haven't set this with powder in my t-zone just my under eye area and I've been so impressed with the way it lasts in the cheek area chin all that kind of stuff bottom line is though 
this shocked me. I like. I really like this foundation. You have to like light coverage in my opinion unless you want to get stuck really working and building up and letting it dry in between those layers. That to me is kind of a hassle, but I found that once I have my concealer, my powder, my blush, my bronzer, all that kind of stuff on, the coverage, the light coverage here was really secondary. What I liked was just how it evened up my skin tone for me to then layer all those products on. Don't get me wrong, I'm still a very full and flawless coverage foundation kind of person, but I just shocked myself with how much I love this despite how little coverage it provides. So highly recommend this to you if you yourself are a light coverage kind of person, you're looking for something lighter for the really hot later months of summer, or if you're on the other end of the world and you're looking for something going into spring and summer, this is a great one to pick, or if just in general you prefer light coverage, this is one that will last all day, especially on combo and maybe even oily skin. Really shocked me how well it work there. All right, now onto the Rouge Artist lipsticks. I have six shades to swatch for you. Each of these retails for $22 a piece, and in the entire Rouge Artist collection, they launched 45 shades. There are both matte and cream uh, finishes, and then among those finishes, there are five different kind of shade categories. There's nude, red, pink, berry, one of which I'm wearing on my lips right now, and then artistic. Let's go ahead and talk about the packaging. It's in a very basic sleek black metallic bullet. I think it's metallic or it's a plastic that sounds like metal. And on the top here, it has the Makeup Forever logo. The bottom, once you take the lid off, the bottom's kind of weighted, which is really nice. It feels like a more high-end luxurious packaging, which I would hope for 22 bucks a piece. And then you can see the shape is slightly changed. They used to have a more traditional lipstick bullet shape, and this is a little bit more severely tapered at the top, which I personally find helps get the Cupid's bow. That's always, and get a little bit more precision when you get in these outer corners here at the bottom. Helps get a really nice, clean line because nothing to me is worse than applying your lipstick, especially a fun, bold shade like this, and having to go back and correct the tissue or remover or concealer or whatever the heck. This ensures that it's like, like minimal mess. So while it's out, let's just go ahead and start with this shade. This is C502. It's a really light lilac-y grayish. Very beautiful in my opinion. One of those colors that when it became super hot and trendy, I didn't trust it. I thought there's no way that's going to work for me. I'll never wear it. And I've since this is kind of like the second one I've tried. I got a more of a true grayish in the Smashbox, their new liquid lipsticks, and I put it on and instantly fell in love. So this is definitely one of those shades for me that, no, it's not an everyday shade, but it's very fun for me to put looks together with this, I find. It is a cream finish, so you'll notice it is a cream finish, so you'll notice there is a slight sheen as you put this on. And one thing across the board that I found with these is there really is no consistency with the amount of sheen a cream finish will have. My next example is kind of a good case in point. It's this beautiful turquoisey teal shade. This is C603. I mean, it looks black here, but really it is, as you'll see in the swatch, this beautiful deep teal, but I would say this easily has a more balmy, like high shine sheen than any other cream finish I've tried from this collection. As a result, what I've kind of found with this shade is that it has trouble sticking to the inner part of my lip. You might be the same way. I happen to run into lipsticks like these where they just sometimes have a hard time sticking right on that inner portion. Sometimes a good, like, for, for whatever reason, exfoliation and kind of a hard reset on my lips that way will make a difference. Uh, and it did a little bit with this guy, but of all the six shades that I've tried, this one is a little bit more finicky for me, and I think you'll be able to see that in the demo. Onto the shade I'm wearing, this is very much part of the Berry Collection. This is C506, a very deep purpley burgundy, berry, wine, something along those lines. I don't know my colors. Um, but once again, another cream finish, and you can see that it has a little bit of a lighter sheen compared to that teal shade that I just swatched. Onto the category everyone loves, the nudes. This is C105. Once again, another cream finish. This is really pretty because it has a, an even mix of peach and pink, but in a very light capacity, and obviously with that nude mix in, but I find that mixture of peach and pink keep it a very wearable nude for me especially, so I think this would be this would go a long way for a lot of people. Next up, I'm not sure if this is in the nude or berry category, but it is once again another cream finish, and it's C211. And this, fun fact, on the little uh, sheet that they sent inside all of this, they make recommendations ba in all the categories based on your skin tone, but then this one is at the bottom, and they explicitly say, if you can't decide your shade, the perfect blend of pink and brown hues, C211 is universally beautiful on all skin tones. So that to me is a very powerful statement. 
statement if you're going to try any uh, color from this line they are recommending this one and I have to say I personally find it flattering for me I really like it it is one of those kind of daily colors that I'll wear because it does include that even mix of nudes and pinks it makes it kind of a mauve which is one of my favorite everyday shades but not in a very dusty sort of um, borderline unwearable kind of way like a lot of people might think of when they hear the word mauve it's it's definitely more wearable and again the cream sheen here is just not consistent I would say this has the least amount of sheen of all of the shades that I have tried so bottom line as we go into the mattes that's the last of the cream formula that I have to show you I would say that if you're eyeing a cream formula go into the store these are at Sephora all the shades are at Sephora or a makeup forever store if you have those probably Sephora for being realistic go in and swatch it if you can because I personally think it's most helpful not only to see the skin the tone on your skin but also understand how how creamy it is because I have found that the balmier it appears and the creamier it feels in that way um, the faster it is to wear off especially with that really bright teal C603 shade for as beautiful and bold as it is on the lips the pigment lightly stains the lips so you will have slightly teal lips afterwards but the finish itself and the pigment wears away more quickly I find than um, all of the other shades that I've tried so far. Now on to the one matte shade I have to try M401. This is limited edition and made in collaboration with Iconopop actually as was that teal shade that I just talked about. Both of these are limited edition you won't be able to find these for forever but this is the only matte shade that I have the collection you can find for forever. It's just these shades in particular that will eventually go away I'm assuming. So M401 is the only matte shade I have to try. I really like it. It's this beautiful uh, kind of mid to deep tone blue based red. It's going to make your teeth look nice and white. I was actually wearing this in a recent video. I'll annotate it here for reference because quite a few of you asked me what I was wearing and it was this guy, a very classic bold red lip. And the formula itself is non-drying despite being matte. It looks like velvet on the lips but very very comfortable. You will see a little bit of transfer onto glasses but way less I notice than with the cream formula. As a result I just found that I get much longer wear from that. I notice I can go through you know morning snacking, drinking coffee. It's not really until lunch that I see wear and at that point it's it's kind of almost like a stain where I see wear in the center of my lips and so a light touch-up will do. I don't need to go removing and reapplying the whole shebang. I can just kind of you know place it on the center of my lips blot and I'm good to go so I really recommend the matte formula but for as kind of inconsistent as the sheen and wear time of the cream formula was I would want to go give these a swatch in store and just kind of make sure that the texture is similar amongst all the matte shades but if you're looking at a good red recommend this one it's a beautiful one so that's it from me guys, all the new stuff that I had to talk about on Makeup Forever. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've tried any of these, the lipstick, the foundation, what shade you like in the lipstick. Let me know all of that in the comments below. But besides that, thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.